In this video, I'm going to demonstrate connecting a shimmer to Sensor Monkey. Shimmers are small, wireless, wearable health sensors that communicate using Bluetooth. For this demonstration, I'm using a Revision 1.3 shimmer baseboard of the kind shown here. The device has a built-in 3-axis accelerometer. In addition, I have attached a 3-axis gyroscope extension board to measure orientation. Together, they provide a 6 degrees of freedom inertial measurement unit. To start, I have placed the shimmer in the USB charging dock connected to my computer. I am now going to upload the appropriate firmware to the device using the standalone Windows Bootstrap loader provided by Shimmer Research. In particular, I am going to upload the Biomobius Axel Gyro firmware. This firmware provides 50 Hz sampling of the accelerometer and gyroscope. After selecting the firmware and clicking program, the process takes a short amount of time to complete. To communicate with the device, I must pair it with my computer. I can do this using the Bluetooth Add Device Wizard. Once the wizard has finished searching for devices, I select the shimmer, as denoted by the name Firefly, and click Next. I can enter a Bluetooth pairing code of 1234. Windows will install drivers and assign a serial port to allow me to communicate with the device. I can view the device properties to confirm the serial port that has been assigned. I'm looking for the one called SPP or Serial Port Profile. In my case, the shimmer has been assigned to COM5. The shimmer is now paired with my computer, but to connect it to Sensor Monkey, I need to map the serial port to a TCP IP port. Doing so will network enable the device and allow me to connect to it from the web-based Sensor Monkey control panel. I use Bloom to perform the mapping. You can download the Bloom installation file from the Sensor Monkey support page. Once downloaded, double click the file to install it. Once installed, you can run the program from the Windows Start menu. First, I select the serial port assigned to the shimmer, in this case, COM5. Next, I'm going to map this to TCP IP port 20000. Finally, I'm going to increase the polling frequency from 10 Hz to 50 Hz to match the sampling rate of the shimmer's firmware. The rest of the settings can be left as they are. I can then listen for incoming connections by pressing start. The shimmer has now been configured and is ready to be connected to Sensor Monkey. That concludes part one of this tutorial. To access the web-based control panel, go to the SensorMonkey homepage and log in with your Facebook account. Once logged in, you can access your control panel through the Sensors link at the top of the page. To connect the shimmer, I'm going to add an entry for it named My Shimmer.
From here, I must specify the IP address and port number where the device can be found. Recall from part 1 that I am using Bloom to map the Shimmer's serial port to TCP IP port 20,000. So I enter a port number of 20,000. I can leave the IP address unchanged because Bloom is running on my local machine. If Bloom was running on another machine connected over a local area network, for example, then I would enter the IP address of that machine instead. I also need to specify a format description file that tells SensorMonkey how to parse and interpret the data being sent by the shimmer. The source code for the Biomobius Axel Gyro firmware details the packet format used to transmit data, specifically the length of each packet, the framing bit sequences, and the format of the accelerometer and gyroscope data are all documented. As part of the SensorMonkey service, we have uploaded a set of format description files for some of the more widely used Shimmer firmwares. In my case, I am using a revision 1.3 Shimmer with the Biomobius Axel Gyro firmware, so I can select the Shimmer 1 dash Axel Gyro dash biomobius.xml file. As you can see, the text editor has been populated with a suitable format description file. Reading through the text, we can see variable definitions for the accelerometer and gyroscope data. These variables are parsed by the SensorMonkey control panel and made available to view or publish on the Stream tab once we have connected to the Shimmer. For Shimmer firmwares that do not have a corresponding format description file, you can select an existing one and modify it as needed. You can find more information on the SensorMonkey support page. I'm now going to click Connect. Once connected, the grid shows an updated connection status for the Shimmer. I can also verify the connection using Bloom. The program should show a connection icon and a message detailing the address from which the connection was accepted. By default, shimmers do not begin sampling data until they are explicitly instructed to do so. I can use the control tab to send commands to the shimmer. The particular commands used by the Shimmer are documented in the source code for the Biomobius Axel Gyro firmware. They are also listed at the top of the format description file, should you forget what they are. I can enter the commands in the fields provided. allowing these two buttons to act as start and stop controllers for the Shimmer device. I must precede the commands with a hash symbol to tell the control panel to interpret them as hexadecimal character pairs to ensure that they are sent to the Shimmer in binary form. Now, I'm going to start streaming data from the Shimmer by clicking the newly configured start button. If I check Bloom, I can see the number of bytes now being transmitted by the shimmer over the TCP IP port. By selecting the Stream tab, I can visualize any of the incoming variables by clicking the graph icon to the right. Here, I am viewing the accelerometer data along the X and Y axes. I can also turn on the real-time grid to get live updates as the data is parsed from the shimmer. 
To publish data live over the internet, I can, for example, select the accelerometer variables, as well as a stream type, and click the Publish button. If I navigate to the Remote Sensors tab, I can see my shimmer listed under the public streams. I can select the stream and click Subscribe to begin receiving real-time accelerometer updates from the shimmer. I can turn on the real-time grid or I can view output from each variable over time. Finally, I can also send remote commands back to the shimmer to control its operation. In this case, I can actually send a command to the device to tell it to stop streaming. I just enter the text and press return. As you can see, the shimmer has stopped streaming data. I can verify that this is the case by checking Bloom. I can then turn it back on again remotely by sending another command. That concludes the final part of this tutorial demonstrating how to connect a shimmer to Sensor Monkey. My accelerometer is streaming live over the internet and I can log into my control panel and view the data from any device connected to the web. Thank you for watching.